Hi guys, welcome to the annual payroll processing template. Um, it is uh, something that will hopefully help you as you start to process payroll for your employees. And I just wanted to, to take a second to give you a brief overview of how it works before you start using it. And also to tell you that there is an article that goes along with it called How to Do Payroll in Excel that you may find useful. It gives a lot more detail um, for some of the steps and just some helpful hints, hits, hints and tips. So when you get ready to start, definitely though, start with the instructions tab. It's not a lot here, but it does tell you where to start, that you'll need to start with setting up your employee data, then going to your employee payroll tax, employer payroll tax tab, and so forth. And then it also has some important notes here at the bottom. Uh, just things for you to keep in mind as you are using this template. So it does, for instance, don't delete terminated employees from the setup employee data tab until you are recreating the template for the next year. That's helpful. And I will uh, show you why that's helpful uh, before we finish the video. So once you've reviewed the instructions, and taking a look at the article, you could do that before or after. Uh, I would definitely come over to the Setup Employee Data tab. The Setup Employee Data tab is where you will list all of your employees and their data. So I would definitely recommend doing this in one sitting and make sure that you spell each employee's name correctly and you have everything you need so you know how much they're getting paid and so forth. So here I'm starting out with John Doe very unique name here. And I'm putting in his hourly rate, uh, $25. Uh, of course, if you have salaried employees, there is a spot for that. So you'll put in their annual salary and then also the number of pay periods that they uh, will be paid in the year. So if they're paid once a month, that's 12 pay periods. If they're paid twice a month, that's 24. Uh, that's very important uh, for this spreadsheet to be able to calculate uh, their earnings each period. So. You also have space to put in federal and state income tax rates. Now that could be different depending on like how you're coming up with the amount you need to withhold. You will or you should receive W-4 forms from each employee at their, uh, before their start date, at or before their start date, and use that information to figure out how much you need to withhold from each check. Now the IRS does have some resources uh, that you can use. And so sometimes you may come out with uh, an actual amount versus a percentage. And if that's the case, I will show you exactly how to overwrite the amount that this spreadsheet calculates so that you can have more accurate information. And also, I recommend checking with your state to see if they actually charge state income tax because if not all states do. If they don't, feel free to leave this the cell blank for each employee. Uh, so Social Security and Medicare tax rates, those are fixed, as you see, and that's our, it's in here regardless of, uh, regardless of what's, what row you're on. So there's also a note saying that you shouldn't change this because it's predetermined by the IRS, which is true. This has been the same, uh, these rates have been the same for years. Uh, I'm not saying they won't change in the future. It is a good idea to check each year that there have not been any changes. But uh, this has been pretty standard. So I would also take a look at the section on benefits and deductions. If you have, if you allow your employees to partake in any employee benefits and you withhold deductions for that. So if you have health insurance, definitely put down the amount that you typically withhold from each check. Um, not each month, unless they're only getting paid once a month. If they're getting paid twice a month and health insurance is $200 for the month, then you're taking you're typically taking out hundred dollars for each check. So I would definitely put that here, and then that goes for 401k garnishments, and then I have two columns here for other deductions. This is uh, for you to use in the event that you have deductions that are not listed here. You can even rename these to match whatever it is that you need, and it will not mess anything up with the spreadsheet. This last section here is for PTO. And the only thing you'll need to enter when you're setting this up is the amount of PTO hours that you're giving your employees. Obviously, if you're not giving out PTO, then you can disregard this section. Uh, I will show you how it all comes and works full circle. So columns Q and R are already filled with formulas. You do not have to do anything. 
it should always tell you how much PTO you have remaining, the employee has remaining, and how many hours they've taken. So let's take a look at the next tab, which is the employer payroll tax tab. This one's not as automated. It's mainly for organization, but it, I think still think it's useful. So here you can enter your tax rates. We actually already have the federal unemployment tax rate at 6% here for you. State unemployment tax rate can vary, so you'll have to definitely figure out what yours is. And when it comes to the Social Security and Medicare, this is the employer portion of that tax. So as you saw, um, you know, the employees actually pay this, this amount to, you'll withhold that amount from their checks, but you'll also need to pay your own portion. So you pay the other half. And so that those rates are fixed and we have them here. This bottom portion that tells you how much you owe in taxes is basically broken down by month and the gross wages uh, already, the gross wage column has a formula for each month. So you don't have to worry about pulling the, the um, earnings for each month. Um, so it, it's going to calculate the total amount that your employee earned minus any non-taxable reimbursements. So let's say, for instance, one of your employees goes to a conference for work and they send 100 bucks, and you need to reimburse them that $100. Well, that's not taxed and you don't have to pay taxes on that. They don't have to pay taxes on that. There's um, that needs to be excluded from this amount, and it is. So you don't have to worry. Here you will enter the total amount of the uh, federal unemployment taxes that you owe for this month, and same with state unemployment tax. Now keep in mind for federal unemployment tax, you only owe six percent of the first seven thousand dollars that each employee earns. So, and that's for the year. So you'll need to keep track of that, which we do have a tab in the spreadsheet that's uh, the, it's called the annual um, payroll tab. And it basically will show you how much each employee is earned year to date. So that should help you keep up with that. Um, so you'll just enter these numbers manually and then you can always refer to this tab if you need to make any comparisons uh, or see if anything looks off. It'll just help you with research purposes and to keep stay organized. Here for Social Security and Medicare taxes, uh, you see NA in these cells. That's because there is a formula already here that will calculate, uh, it will begin to calculate how much you owe as soon as you start paying employees and actually and putting it into this template. There's also a column for workers comp. Workers comp is, uh, most days typically charge or at least require you to purchase that. So how much ever you're responsible for paying each month, you can input that here. So the next tab you should take a look at will be the monthly payroll tab, okay? So when you're ready to start paying employees, let's say it's January and we'll say January the 15th and let's say we're paying John Doe, okay? Actually, let's delete John Doe. I wanna show you what this looks like, what it's gonna look like when you get started. When you get started, nothing's going to be here, okay? And so we need to pay John Doe. Let's say I put in John and I forgot, oh, John Doe is D-O-E and I put D-O and I misspell his name. Nothing will populate. And that's not how this uh, spreadsheet works. So uh, I do recommend uh, when you get ready to start paying employees to go back to your setup tab and copy the names of all the employees you have there. So... John Doe, I would copy his name and paste it into this app, this January payroll tab, so that I know that it matches and there's no question about it. There's no errors. And as you see, his straight time hourly pay rate populates automatically, along with his overtime hourly rate. Now let's talk about the overtime hourly rate. That one is actually just calculated here, but it's calculated at the time and a half rate, which is what most states require you as an employer to pay out if your employee works over 40 hours in a week. Now, if you're in a state like California that requires double time in some instances, you may need to adjust this. Um, and you may have to do it on a case by case basis. It really depends just on how your business works and how often it happens. So once you have the name here, and they're 
pay rates have populated, you can put in the number of hours they worked for the week. So let's just say John worked 40 hours for the week. And let's even say he took five hours of PTO. And we'll, there's a spot for overtime, there's a spot for bonus and non-taxable income, which we'll put in, let's put in a hundred bucks. That's, let's say he went to a conference and he, uh, he had to spend his own money on a hotel and you're just reimbursing him. Well, this section here from J through, let's see, J through U is all automated. You don't have to do anything. Everything is automatically populates. So it says, do not change those cells. Um, obviously there's no salary for the pay period just because he's an hourly worker. Um, but his straight time pay is what he, he earned from, um, working. And so his working his 40 hours plus his five hours of PTO, all that's in this $1,125. Um, there's no overtime and gross pay is 1225 just because it adds in the non-taxable income or the hotel reimbursement fee we just talked about. Social Security and Medicare tax are automatically populated just because the, we know the formulas, they're flat. You don't have to worry that that is changing. Federal income tax is based on the formula that, or based on the percentage that you actually input on the setup tab. So that's both for federal and state. Now remember, again, with that, when it comes to the federal income tax system, it's progressive here in the US. So there's not really one fixed rate uh, that you can that you can apply to that um, amount that your employee earned. So if you are using a system to calculate that, uh, how much your employee earns and you have an amount and say, oh, you realize you really need to hold, withhold $61, feel free to overwrite this $58.50, no biggie. You can overwrite it, it's not going to disturb the spreadsheet one bit. Uh, and then as you go on over further, you have benefits. So remember the health insurance, the vision, all those different benefits on the other, on the setup tab. It is, everything is totaled here in this column for benefits. And then other deductions, which we didn't put anything there, but let's say obviously if there were garnishments or anything, or you had any special deductions that just were for your business, then they would show here as a total. And then we have total deductions, which is, that number includes all taxes and uh, deductions for benefits and whatnot. So anything that reduces the employee's earnings. And then finally we have net pay. Net pay is how much you are paying your employee. So if that's how much you cut the check for or send a direct deposit uh, or deposit to their pay card. So a very important amount. Let's take a look at February. Now I wanna take a look at two months just because we're gonna look at the annual tab and I want you just to see how it all flows. So I do already have John Doe here again <laughs> and I have 15, uh, February the 15th is his payday. Uh, this time I said he worked some overtime hours. And so that's just to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, you see the straight time pay, Overtime pays 375. So those overtime hours, those 10 overtime hours are actually calculated at the $37.50 rate. So, um, and then you have your gross pay and then everything else is pretty much the same. That functions well. So let's take a look at the annual payroll tab, which is the last tab down here. And by the way, if all of these uh, monthly tabs appear to be overwhelming to you, Definitely hide them. Hide them until you need them, and then and then you can unhide. Um, I just wanted to make sure you saw, you're able to see the spreadsheet in, in, in full. So this last tab that we're going to take a look at is the year-to-date payroll tab. And it basically, it's automated. Like you literally don't have to enter anything on this tab. Every It has formulas, I think, in every single cell. And so even here with the employee name, which is why it's important that when you set up your employees that you have the name spelled correctly and you do not delete them because the year-to-date payroll tab is going to automatically pull each employee's name uh, from the setup tab. So I recommend um, if you have an employee, let's say John leaves in March, he's here January and February, he leaves in March, don't go back to the setup tab and delete his information because it will remove it from the spreadsheet. And so then your year-to-date numbers will be skewed. They will be wrong. Um, and then anything else that was pulling from that setup tab will be off. So that's just important to note. 
So as you can see, everything is annualized. It's pulling data from each month. So this is how many uh, straight time hours that John has worked for the year so far, which is really just January and February. It's 80. He worked 40, I think, per month. And then PTO hours, he's, he's worked 10. Overtime, he's worked 10. So you should always be able to look at this to see year to date what you paid out, how much he's worked, um, and, and so forth. One thing to take note of is the PTO hours. I wanted to circle back around and I didn't want to forget about that. It calculates the total number of PTO hours that he has each employee takes uh, each pay period. So what you would do is go back to, let's go back to the setup tab because I just want to show you really quickly. Remember when I told you that all you need to enter on the setup tab for PTO is how many hours that the employee was giving given for the, the year, and this cell would actually tell you how much is remaining at all times, as long as you're keeping all of your other payroll data updated. So it shows you that 10 hours have been taken, and it shows you that 30 hours are remaining. So you can always take a look at this tab to see when you may need to, to have a talk with John. Maybe he's going over, or maybe he's, he's nearing uh, zero hours remaining. So this is just something handy until you get like a time tracking tool or something that you can use. All right. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's how this spreadsheet works in a gist. If you have any questions, definitely refer to the how to do payroll in Excel article because there's quite a few details in there that may answer your questions. You can also leave comments, suggestions, questions um, underneath that article. We have a comment section or underneath this video. So uh, anything we can do to help. I know you may need a little assistance personalizing the spreadsheet for your own business. We'll definitely be happy to assist.